Welcome to Privilege Catamarans America. I'm Ron Poirier. Today we're going to do a tour of the mechanical systems aboard this new Privilege 510 Tip Luna. So here on the starboard engine, you'll find access to the oil fill here at the back. Again, all of this is on the outboard side of the engine. The, the fuel filter is located right here. You'll also notice that the black and yellow lines right forward in the engine room is the heat exchanger lines to your hot water boiler. Um, automatic shutoff for the engine emergency shutoff is here. The actual oil filter is located right beside this dipstick. Um, what you'll also find on this side of the engine, of course, is for emergency purposes, should the helm controls fail, you have emergency panels here in the engine room. But for them to work, the, the one thing you need to do is change the, the, the connections. So this green connection would be separated and you would insert the gray one in instead. And that would give you use of the panel that's right here in the emergency engine room panel. So here on the inboard side of the engine, you have your coolant fill here on the top of the engine. On the inboard wall, we have mounted the cranking battery, uh, battery switch right here. Uh, just forward to that is the sea strainer for the engine, as well as the seacock to pick up seawater for the engine. Here on the forward part of the engine is the uh, dipstick for checking your, your um, gearbox oil. So the engine exhaust of course is located just forward of the engine and you can see the temperature sensor is attached right here again on this outboard side. We have the seacock in the pickup saltwater pickup for the gen set and its strainer is located right here. Along the outboard side again we have a series of filters. Um, the first here of course is a fuel filter for the engine with a primer we have a secondary oil fuel filter as well for the engine and right next to it is a fuel filter for the generator. You'll notice that we also have a out port for the overflow for the shaft seal. Just above this seacock is the wet exhaust exit for the engine exhaust. Located all the way aft in the starboard room you'll find of course the gen set itself sitting on a shelf Immediately behind it, as well as against the outboard wall, is the exhaust system for the generator. The battery, the cranking battery for the gen set itself, is located aft again, just, just aft of the muffler system. In the center part, you'll see the fire suppression system that is controlled from the cockpit. Here on the shelf that supports the steering rudder, of course, is the ram for the hydraulic steering. The, the bypass is located here as well and of course the bypass would be used in the case of uh, you know straightening rudders adjusting rudders and of course using an emergency rudder as well. Naturally, we have the same engine here on the port side as we did on the starboard side. The dipstick, the oil fill, the filter, um, things like the emergency switch are all now located on the inboard side, making them somewhat easier to reach when you do your daily checks. Also located inboard in this engine room are, of course, your fuel filters and your crank battery and battery switch. So located here again, just forward of the engine, on the outboard side of the engine room, you'll find a couple of pickup seacocks. One, of course, is for the engine itself with its own strainer, a saltwater pickup. And right beside it is a saltwater pickup with a strainer leading to this pump, which is the saltwater pump. This boat is equipped with a saltwater washdown in the cockpit and, of course, up at the anchor as well. 
The last seacock located on the side is the, is the water outlet for the dripless shaft seal located right here, of course, on the shaft drive of this engine. Tick Luna is equipped with a Webasto chiller system which means that rather than having individual heat pumps in all of the rooms throughout the boat, you have one centralized condenser unit. And the way this operates, one of the benefits is I have a single water pickup. The saltwater seacock for the chiller system is located here just forward of the engine. And of course, what it does, it's, it's fed to a pressure pump directly underneath the unit. And of course, that unit mixes salt water in order to help achieve the temperature that's required to really operate the fan coils that are located throughout the boat. There are six fan coils. There is one in each aft cabin on this boat, two in the salon, and two in the massive forward cabin. So these insulated lines that you see descending into the boat, the reason that they are all fully insulated is of course we want to achieve a four degree temperature for the glycol as it's distributed to all the fan coils. You can see that there's, there is a distribution manifold here for these glycol lines as they enter into the boat. Uh, three of these lines here are going to manage the glycol for the two aft cabins, and four other lines are going to run into the galley where you have control there, and we'll review that as well. This red expansion tank located on the bulkhead is to regulate pressure in the glycol lines. There is a gauge, of course, as well as a valve to turn it on and off. Right beside the strainer system for the chiller system is the strainer and pickup for the water maker. So the salt water enters into the system here and it enters into the low pressure pump at the same point that you have a fresh water feed and that's so that you can manually flush the entire system as well. From that low pressure pump you feed through the pre-filters which of course makes its way into the high pressure pump right located right within the water maker system itself. From here we're going to travel to above this bulkhead. It's a nice easy position for changing them and this is where the membranes are located. So the high pressure pump of course is driving the water through these membranes. Once the water is pressed through the membranes of course it returns, it flows back to the water maker system itself and all salt water is evacuated out of course the hull right here at a valve right here outboard and of course at this point your fresh water is going to be fed through this line and there's going to be a splitter here that will allow you to direct water to either the port or the starboard fresh water tanks and as you can see you can decide to drive everything to one tank or both or just or the other and that is the setup here and as you can see the nice thing about this layout, even though it feels like spaghetti, everything is very accessible in order to do all of this. So for maximum noise control, the fresh water pump system is located all the way aft here in this port engine room. You'll see that the pump itself is located on top of the accumulator tank, and the tank has rubber mounts on that platform. So it virtually is undetectable throughout the boat. Also located on the shelf right beside the freshwater pump and expansion tank is the autopilot pump. Tick Luna is also equipped with an optional shore water connection and as you can see back here we've also added filtration to that shore water connection. So that line would feed right up here to the manifold which we'll talk about next. Located on the inboard side of the port engine room is the main water distribution manifold. You have two choices. Of course, you can feed that manifold from the water tanks, or on this particular boat, I have the ability to shut down those tanks and feed this manifold directly from the shore inlet. And again, these are all supplies to various zones of the boat. And of course, those zones have additional manifolds and valves that we'll inspect later as well. 
Again, also located right here on this inboard side is the hydraulic steering control valves. So everything for controlling autopilots and the steering itself is right here. And you also have the other bypass valve, which again you would need if you wanted to adjust your rudders or use an emergency tiller for that matter. Located under the helm seat is the propane tank. Some of our boats are equipped without any propane whatsoever, but if you're going to have a propane service either inside or out, this is where the tank would be located. Here in the propane locker, you'll find a solenoid, which is controlled at the, in the galley, and of course two valves to direct propane either to the galley, or in this case to the barbecue here in the cockpit. We also have an inline leak detector here. On the 510, you have three choices for this area in the cockpit. You can either have additional seating here. We also have an electric Kenyan stovetop with a sink, or as Tick Luna chose, a full-size Napoleon barbecue. This locker, of course, is storage and a way to turn on and off the barbecue. This barbecue will also have a rotisserie, which will be controlled in here too. In this aft bench, you'll find the connections for the manual bilge pumps that lead into the cabin floor area as well as the engine rooms. And of course, this is your manual bilge pump system. The valve allows you to direct your efforts with the manual bilge pump to the, the bilge inside the boat or the engine room. We have the exact same arrangement here for the starboard side. In the next video, we'll continue the mechanical tour inside the vessel, but with a little more emphasis on the plumbing systems. We hope you've enjoyed this. We look forward to talking to you again soon.